plan of care in SPED Forms 2.0. So the first thing we do using the left-hand sidebar is open the MA tab. Today we're using Anita Brake, which is a fake student that we often use at Rum River. From here, you are going to make sure that you have an ICD-10 code. There must be one selected. This is a very important part of billing. If you have any questions, please ask your OT or contact your coordinator. Once you hit the back button and toggle to the MA page, you scroll all the way down to PCA plan. If the student doesn't have a plan of care already, please create a new plan. If they do have a plan, you can click the plan to view it. The next thing you will do is enter in the emergency contact information and student information. You indicate the start and end dates of this plan, and then you move on to filling in the summary. Anita is a student with developmental delay in cognitive skills, self-help skills, and motor skills. Anita requires one-to-one -one support with all ADLs, IADLs, social and play interaction, and attention. She ambulates with independence with no assistive device requiring constant supervision for safety. So this is really the area that you describe needs. An ADL is an activity of living which is found on your time study when you're determining what you're going to be billing for. We want whoever is working with this student to be able to understand what their need is and the instructions to support it. So you're going to add an ADL, and an example of this is eating. We describe that by saying Anita needs, to help, needs help with feeding. She is currently working on eating with a spoon for pureed foods. Her lunch is blended to a pureed texture, and she will drink from a straw. There are no special dietary restrictions reported by parents. There could be more than one ADL, so another example of that would be for behavior. We list that the ADL is for behavior, then we describe that she requires one-to-one -one support for behavioral intervention, and that happens to deal with throwing, toys, spinning, and pinching. You can always add more to that for specific intervention, and it depends on your student and what you're billing for. The next thing you're going to do is go down to steps to address safety and vulnerability issues of child or youth. This is where you describe, for us, this is Anita will have constant supervision due to vulnerability and a description of that. Next is the directions for PCA or qualified personnel communications with the child's primary teacher, case manager, parent, or guardian. This just states that the regular education teacher and other staff will have access to Anita's IEP and accommodations. The next part is the instructions for daily documentation by the PCA. This basically is just stating that the PCA will complete a log or other documentation forms that is showing the time spent supporting the things that you're billing for. The last piece is backup staff planning. This just means that whoever is working with the child, if they're a substitute, um, or other support people will have access to the IEP or plan of care so that they understand how to assist the student. At the very bottom, you're going to need to indicate who your qualified professional is and who your PCAs working with the child are. We want the PCAs to be certified. It's very necessary for this process. And when you're in your own students, you'll be able to add in your own um, supervisors for that. Monthly, you're going to go back into this plan of care and update um, the conversations that you have with PCAs, um, whether there are changes or concerns. And then from that point, you print this out, everybody signs it, and then you upload it back into SPED Forms history. If it's a plan that has already been set in place, maybe you have a student that you had a plan for last year, you just reactivate it, make your updates, and follow the same signing and uploading procedures as you would if it were brand new.